I'm sharing with you from Jeremiah, my day with Jeremiah 33. You know, we all know the telephone number of the Lord, 333. From children, church, when you were five years old, not at all. Oh, Lord, help us. Okay, that was uh, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me. The, other, the first thing that I want to say is, and if only you remember this, then great, we can, we can even leave, and that is, in our prayer, there mustn't first be a calling for, God, help me with this and help me with this. Call to me and I will answer you. I call unto you, Lord, help me with this and help me. What must I do? What must I do here? Yes, all of that is necessary. But here he doesn't say that. He says, call to me. In the other translation, call unto me. Where he says, I'm calling him. I call unto who he is. If I don't know who he is, I don't know who to call unto. Hello? There's a calling, a cry from my heart to him. And that is through the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, the Holy Spirit testifies in my spirit and call out Abba with my spirit. So my spirit is calling out Abba. Not my spirit is not calling out Lord, help me with this. Lord, help me with that. Lord, help me with that. No. My spirit is calling out Papa, Daddy, Abba. So when I'm walking with the Holy Spirit, first of all, in my prayer, I'm calling out to Him and I acknowledge Him who He is. And He says, if you acknowledge me who I am and you call out unto me just because of who I am, where you say, God, I want your attention and my attention is on you, then I will show you great and marvelous, mighty things which you do not know. Things that you didn't think of that God wants to show you that even. Things that he wants to show you that you didn't ask for that he must show you that. I will show you great and marvelous things. God, I pray that you will ask me that great and that marvelous things about this and this and this. No, 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 no. You've called unto him. And when you call unto him, he says, I will surprise you. I will show you great and marvelous things. I'm going to show you things that you didn't think of, that you didn't think of knowing, that you didn't think that is possible. But that's what I want to do, your Lord. But call unto me, unto who I am. Be still and know that I am God. All the other voices, all the other agendas, when you sit before me, when you call unto me, when you are with me, shh, be still and know I am Lord. Be still and know who I am. So call unto who I am. Call who I am in your life. Amen. And I say, I speak to my Redeemer, I speak to my Shepherd. Shepherd Lord, King of Kings, my Father, my Redeemer, my Hero, my... Sh hello, 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 hello. And so many more. God wants to surprise you, but make sure you come to the place of knowing really who He is, so that you will know who you're calling out to. Because we can call out unto rejection, and rejection will show us who we are. You can call out unto your circumstances. But you so focus on your circumstances, you actually call unto your circumstances, and not unto the Lord. Hello? But in your prayer, the one that you focus on the, more, on the most, even in your prayer, you are busy with that. You are intimate with that in your prayer. So if I'm looking at my circumstances and my challenges and what I'm going through, and I'm in prayer, but even in my prayer, I'm more intimate with my situation than with God. Just so, by the way, Lord, come and help me with this, 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 this. Call unto me. Call unto me. I will answer you, and I promise you, I will surprise you. I will show you great and marvelous things. <clears throat> Verse 6. Behold, I will bring it 
health. It is what? It is not a person. A city. I will bring my city health and healing. God wants to heal his city. I will heal them and heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. What is God saying there? He will bring healing to his city, health to his city. It's not just to the people, to the whole group. You can be in the in a healthy atmosphere. Or you can be in an atmosphere that is actually sickening or oppressive or a negative atmosphere. You with me? God wants to heal the atmosphere that you live in. God wants to bring a healthy atmosphere around you. Not just heal you. He wants his people to be healthy. And not, that is not just physically but a healthy atmosphere. Because in that place where there is no sickness, the atmosphere of sickness, the atmosphere of depression, you know, you come into a place and it feels like this is really, something is very depressing here. Or something is, everybody's like negative. You can come into a place and you can experience there's a lot of lust in this place. Or you can be in a place and you can, <sighs> there's a lightness. There's a lightness in this place. Because God is bringing healing. He's bringing health. He's bringing that lightness. That's what God wants to do in our lives. And there we, we go. That it will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. I will bring health and healing. And I will reveal to them. I will reveal to them the abundance of uh, abundance in the one in the other translations talking about the the quality of peace the abundance of peace um dear summer frere dear summer give my dear summer in english um precious but it's very valuable let's say valuable abundance of valuable very valuable peace and truth talking about peace that's not just a state of mind in the sense of in your emotions peace that's not just a Cease fire in your heart or between you and your wife or you and your friends and you and whoever. It's not a ceasefire. It's something that was bought with a price through Jesus Christ. He is the Prince of Peace in my life. Amen? So God brings healing, but then he gives us his son as the Prince of Peace in our midst. And through him we have an abundance, abundance of peace. Amen? If he gives us his son, how will he not also then give us all the rest that we need? But from him flows this awesome, awesome peace that is bought with this price, the son of God. So I need to know, you need to know, what is this peace God is talking about? But if I don't allow God to heal me, if I don't allow healing in me, through me, with me, around me, and trust God that I will come into this place in this atmosphere of healing, then it cannot happen. Are you with me? So may God help you, may God help me, that we understand how he wants to bring healing and this abundance of peace in our midst. Then, in verse 11, Jeremiah 33, 11. Jeremiah 33, 1, 1. Everybody say 3, 3, 1, 1. So that you remember. Okay. What will be heard? When God works, when God restores, when God heals, what will happen? The voice of joy will be heard. The voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom. The voice of the bride. The voice of those who will say, Praise the Lord of hosts. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And the voice of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. My brother, my sister, there can be a lot of voices. There can be a lot of voices. But when God heals you, when he restores you, when he brings that peace, that abundant godly peace, the peace is that like the authority when authority enters. If I must give you that picture, if God is the Prince of Peace and we receive his peace, 
It's like there's a lot of things happening and suddenly the king appears and everybody, shh! Stand still, be silent, and the king enters. Up to, until he's there, at his throne, and he sits down and everybody sits. Are you with me? But uh, they are arrested by the presence of authority. That type of peace is the peace that is from God. Amen? It's the peace not when there's a storm that you command the storm to stop and then we have peace. No, peace is in the midst of the storm. But if I cannot see that, if I cannot see the peace in the midst of the storm, I cannot see when Jesus comes to the boat, walking on the, on the sea, walking on the storm. He walked on the sea, but he basically walked on the storm. Hello? Are you with me? But if I focus on the storm the whole time, I will just see the ghost. I will not recognize him in the storm. I will not recognize the prince of peace in the storm. If I'm so focused on with anxiety and all my things and I, I'm stressed out and I have these deadlines and I have all these things that must happen. I'm so busy with the boat and I cannot understand where is God. How could he have allowed it for us to come on this boat and he asked us to come through and he put us in. He knew the storm was going to come. Why did God put me in the circumstances? Why did God allow these things in my life? And I'm so busy with, why did God allow this storm around me? And I'm drowning in the storm that I cannot see him walking towards me. And then he said, calm the storm. And then he said, you, oh little of faith. I mean, not, not like calming them and encouraging them. No, I will always be here for you. You don't need to. Worry, why did you stress so much? No, 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 no. I mean, they were all freaked out, man. They are freaked out. And immediately what they receive? A spanking. <laughs> In the storm, Jesus comes to the storm and says, you little of faith. Why, what is he saying? You had the authority to calm the storm. In my name. Jesus went, wanted to pass them go to the other side, but because of their faith, and they're not understanding how to apply their faith and their authority, he got into the boat. Praise God for that grace, that if we don't understand how to use the authority God has given us, he will, be, he will come in. He will come in the boat, and he will help us. And then we will learn more and more. Amen? May God help you. May God help me. In this, so what will be heard? Not the voice of the storm, not the voice in the cries of we're gonna, we're gonna drown, we're gonna, this gonna happen, that gonna happen. Not first of all, the voice in prayer of your needs, the voice of your needs, of your circumstances, the voice of your challenges with the Goliaths. You're gonna, not gonna make the list of the Goliaths in your prayer before the Lord first. Uh uh. It's going to be about him. The voice of joy. The voice of gladness. The voice of the bride. The voice of the bridegroom. The voice of the one that says, the Lord God. He's the one. And the voice that brings the sacrifice of praise. What am I saying to you today? My brother, my sister, in you, let there be a voice of, first one, joy. Everybody say the voice of joy. I want to say there's a voice of God's excitement and God's emotions. You can write that. The voice of his excitement and his emotions is in you. I, f I can hear God's excitement. It's a, I can hear my father's excitement about me. Let it be so in Jesus' name. The voice of joy is there. The voice of energy, the voice of this excitement, it's there. And the second one, the voice of gladness. But the voice of gladness, I want to say it's a, a voice of being happy. That I'm happy, I'm content. So it is a, it's a happiness, 
I'm glad. You know, if I must say, I'm glad that God is in control. It's not the joy of jumping up and down. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That joy is a major energy going up and down, eh? But this gladness is, I'm so glad God is in control. I'm so content in the place where I am. And contentment is not like, oh, whatever happens, that happens. No. Contentment is great gain. And contentment is linked with the scripture, as we said a hundred times already, with Philippians 4 verse 13. Hey? For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why does it say for? Because before that, it says something. Paul said, I went through this, I went through that, I went through that, I went through this. But I have learned through all of this, I've learned to be content. And how was it possible for me to learn how to be content when I had a lot, when I had nothing, when I faced all these trials? How was it possible for me to learn how to be content for what does he say then? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not first of all for my circumstance and the things to change. It's for me to change in the midst of my circumstances. It's for me to learn how to be content. How to be happy. How to have gladness of heart in the midst of whatever. Last week we talked about it. God wants to keep us busy with gladness of heart. God wants to keep us busy with how to be happy, how to be content, how to be glad and have this gladness of heart. That was in, Pro, in, in Ecclesiastes, eh? That we spoke about last week. So I'm just saying, my brother, my sister, the voice in you of how you are content, the voice in you of saying, I'm so glad, I'm so satisfied. I'm happy. That voice needs to be heard. It's in there. The voice of joy, God's energy, God's excitement is also in there. The voice of joy. And then the voice of gladness is number two. Number three, the voice of the bride and then the voice of the bridegroom. Let's go with the bridegroom first. Yes, he's talking in the physical, but also in the picture that I want to use is Jesus Christ, your bridegroom. And the voice of the one that you are really intimate with, that voice will be alive in you. If you are intimate with your job, with your fears, with your anxiety, with your depression, intimate with your circumstances, intimate with your financial situation, that voice will be clear in you. No, that's not the voice that needs to be heard. I will make sure that I will hear the voice of Jesus Christ, my bridegroom. I will hear the voice of the bridegroom. And the voice of the bridegroom is, is close to me. It's not just the voice of the king that says, go, and the king can speak out there with authority. But the bridegroom is coming in the softness. Hello? And in this intimacy that he wants with you. You need to know his voice, the voice calling you, the voice that wants to love you, the voice of the one that wants to share his love, his heart with you. Because in that place, then you will find no loneliness, because in the place of loneliness, you will allow other voices, other rubbish voices to come in. But if you, if you understand the voice of the bridegroom in you, you will not be lonely. Amen. The voice of the bride. The voice of the bride. You need to understand your voice as the bride of Christ. You need to understand how to respond to him. You need to know the words that you're supposed to be able to speak unto him. You need to hear yourself saying to the bridegroom what needs to be said as from a bride. You are my passion. You are my desire. You are the focus of my life. You are the song in my heart. What is the voice passionately in you? May there be a voice that is crying out, hello, that's calling the bridegroom. Because this is my desire, like the song that we sang. 
his vocabulary that we use because we have a desire and a love for the bridegroom. Amen. The next one, the voice of those who will say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good, his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. The voice that says all of that, I want to say, make sure that the voice who will always honor him and tell you who he is, be clear in you. The voice of those who says, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The voice that can explain God to you. The voice that know who God is. But for that, I need to learn about his voice in the word. Amen? I need to learn who God is. And the Holy Spirit will explain it to me. And as the Holy Spirit explains it to me through the word of God, the voice will be clear in me. I will honor the Lord because he is this and this and this and this and he does this and this and this and this. That voice is clear. But if you don't know and learn and see what he is saying about who is this God, that voice cannot be clear. The voice can only be clear how big is Goliath and what he is saying and how he is standing and how he is intimidating and all of those things. Or the voice of the promise of how Canaan will be and milk and honey and this and this and all these things that God said what he will give me. I will hear all those voices. But there must be a voice that declares in me the greatness of my God. And the voice of God's greatness was so loud in David that even though Goliath was, why, ah, you guys, I challenge you and your God. That voice was not so clear in David. So he said, how dare you do that? Because the voice of God's greatness was in him. May the voice of God's greatness be in you. Make sure that the voice is clear in you about God's awesomeness, God's greatness. His mercy also, his grace over your life, yes. And how he's gracious over you, his long-suffering, his patience over you. Yes, you need to hear that also. Otherwise, you will hear that voice of self-condemnation, that demon of religion and all that other huaras. No, no. Lastly, the sacrifice, the voice of the sacrifice of praise. The voice that says, even though, still I will. Even though, still I will. Even though this is happening, even though I feel like this, even though my circumstances didn't change, still I will honor you. That voice will be silenced when you leave earth for eternity. So you, that voice, you can only hear here on earth, because there's no nothing, no voice in heaven that can say, even though you don't see, still honor God. No, no, no. You will see everything. Only on earth, you can please God with a faith that you cannot please Him with in heaven. Because here you need to walk by faith, because you cannot see, but you see by faith. In heaven, you just see the fullness and you honor him. Don't let the voice of the sacrifice of praise die in you before you go to heaven. Make sure that that voice tomorrow is clear. The voice, let's go for it, of those who will bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. God is giving you that opportunity. Make sure that voice is established in you. This is what these voices will be heard once again, God says. When he will heal and restore Jerusalem and bring healing, abundance of peace, abundance of peace and truth. Is it not then that it says, I must read here, verse 16, last one. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called. The Lord, our righteousness. The Lord, our stature. Righteousness has to do with 
you stand with stature. And your right to stand with stature is only in Christ. So that's why the Lord is our righteousness. The Lord is our only right. Christ Jesus is the only right that we have before the Lord. We have no other right than except die and go to hell. But the right that we have is through Christ our righteousness. Amen. So in all of that, God will save Judah and Jerusalem will dwell safely. What are we talking about? Judah means praise. Jerusalem is the the dwelling place of peace. I want to say in your spirit the joy, the praise, the peace of God, it's all there. The richness of this peace, this valuable peace, this awesome, all these excellent voices through the Holy Spirit in your spirit, it's there. But you can keep kidnap it. You can put it in a jail and make sure that it, it is not safe. It's not coming forth but because your soul will not allow it. So these voices will not speak because my soul is speaking. My soul is throwing this tantrum or my emotions it's saying what will happen and what not will happen. So all these other awesome voices from heaven is locked in my spirit. And I lock it because in my soul, I have, God gives me the right with my will to listen to my flesh, to my emotions, my head, my circumstances, my opinions, my mindset. God gives me that, that key. And I can decide the joy the Judah in me, the joy, the praise in me will be locked up. The peace will be locked up. I will not experience it. It will just be this turmoil and I go through up and the down and this and the that and then anxiety, then, this, then the stress, then the fear, then the... Or when everything is around me is okay, then I'm okay. But if my circumstances, it's rough... If there's a success, I feel I will have guidance. I will find strategy. I have motivation when there's success out there. Or I need to unlock a dynamic that's in my spirit. Because if I'm healed and I, I allow God's healing, the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, you, your voice is in your spirit. Your real, real voice is the voice of your spirit. Hello? Are you with me? The voice that declares who he is in your spirit. The voice that gives you the capacity to say, even though still I will, is in your spirit. Don't lock it up. You cannot be that rude jailer, unfair jailer. But God is giving you capacity to be the jailer. Or the one that to say, I recognize the one that is setting me free. All the solutions, all the answers, all that can flow from heaven is coming through my spirit. And Satan must try through the spirit of the world and your flesh and whatever can come must try everything to make sure you don't unlock the awesomeness that is in your spirit. That you won't unlock, unlock that what is in your spirit that is connected from, from heaven. Where heaven testifies in your spirit. As long as he can keep you too. Because the facts are, I'm, this is why I'm feeling. And you will honor your feeling, you will honor your hurt, you will honor your disappointment, you will honor mm -hmm. that and with those voices, you allow to be alive. No, it cannot be anymore in Jesus' name. Call unto me. Call unto me. Call unto me. God will restore that. But just start with call unto who he is. And he will surprise you. He will show you great and marvelous things. Call unto the Lord.
especially in this season. My brother and my sister, there's voices and voices and voices of deception. COVID is this from the Lord, and that is from the Lord. And this is from because of the end time, this and this is the curse, and this is the conspiracy. And ah, hallelujah. You will find 55 different voices in 55 directions. What is what? In the situation that we are in. And more and more and more and more in the end time that we are going into. The major thing that we need to watch out is not for a 666 and not for how well, one world system, one world money system, you cannot buy, you cannot sell, you're nothing because of the mark of the beast. That is not the main thing. The main thing for the church to watch out for and to do, to watch out for is deception. It says in the last days, they will be so deceived and the deception will be so intense that even it will be so close for the elect, for the church to be totally deceived. It's like just at the right time, God is called, come in. Not to, because we are, will be, we are failures and just before we really fail, he take us out. No, 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 no. But he's saying, be careful. This is the greatest, the biggest thing that can happen. They will put you, throw you through the synagogues. They will throw you for the lion, to the lions. They will, all these things will happen. There will be martyrs and this and this and this, all that things. But watch out. How not to be martyred. No. <laughs> Watch out and make sure you are not deceived. The voices. It will be so close to the truth. It will be so close to the truth. So for that I'm saying establish the voice from heaven in your heart. Establish it that you will know from the fountain of life from your spirit. You find, let's say that again, the voice of Gladness, God's energy, God's excitement. Oh, oh, sorry, voice of joy. The voice of gladness, the happiness from him, the contentment, the state that I can be. Hello? The voice from the bridegroom, intimacy with God. The voice from the bride, who you truly are. The voice that can declare who God really is. And the voice of those who bring the sacrifice of praise. A voice in you that says, even though all these other things they don't speak to me first. But what is inside me is the honor to give God the glory and the praise in spite of what I see and feel. May God set us free. Lord, come and do what you want to do in our lives, through our lives. God, I pray for every man, every woman here. Lord, where these voices that's not from you, I pray that you will set them free. Set them free, Lord, to come into the place where you are, to come into the place where your voice will be so clear to them that they will so embrace the preciousness of your voice. I pray for the, uh, the release from each one, from their spirit, the voice of joy, the voice of your excitement, your energy over each one of us, Lord. That voice of contentment that we can be happy and how to see and how to be glad about life. I pray that the voice will be released and it will be opened up from each one of us, our spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus Christ, be the bridegroom. Come and speak to us in an intimate way. Forgive us for bringing voices of other things or even of our flesh, our justifications, things in our lives closer to us even than your voice in such a way flirting with darkness and doing things, Lord, that is not from you. No, you will be the intimate voice. You will be the precious voice in our hearts. God, in the voice of the bride, thank you that you give us the words how to respond from our spirit to our bridegroom. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that through the word of God, we will know how to respond to our bridegroom. Lord, thank you that you establish in each one of us the voice that can declare who you are. Help us to make that commitment in your word and through your word to, to come to a place to discover who you really are. 
so that the voice can be clear in us and clear in who you are. And lastly, Lord, thank you that we can have the opportunity here on earth that we will never have ever again in heaven to have the voice in us that can bring the sacrifice of praise. Praise and honor as a sacrifice because we declare it by faith that even though things are not always nice, Lord, even though we face trials, even though we we need to face certain things in ourselves and in our circumstances, we have the honor to say, still we will honor you and declare you Lord and Lord alone over our lives. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. And all say,